Welcome back. As we continue to mark Earth Week here on ABC News Live Prime, we want to show you some of the people and innovative technologies that could help us reduce our harmful impact on the planet. A North Carolina farm is using rocks. Yeah, that's right, rocks to help cool the planet. As our Ginger Z shows us, it's not only good for the Earth, it's helping farmers grow more food for a hungry world. We've tried a lot of things to reverse the effects of climate change. Planting more trees, farming seaweed in the ocean, even sucking carbon dioxide out of the sky with vacuums. And yeah, all of this can help. But it turns out this whole time, a simple solution was right under our feet. Here are these steps. Yeah, so you're coming into the old pit. That solution starts here at the Sun Rock Quarry, just outside Durham, North Carolina. It turns out that certain types of rock do a really good job at getting carbon dioxide out of the air. Less CO2 in the atmosphere, of course, could help turn down the planet's thermostat, slowing the impacts of climate change. It's not rocket science, it's rock science. Naturally, the process is called rock weathering, and it starts when rain absorbs carbon dioxide as it falls. When that rain hits volcanic rock, it makes a white chalky substance called bicarbonate that goes into the ocean and often becomes a seashell, which stores that carbon. But that whole process can take thousands to millions of years. And you can see how fine it is. Like, you can break that up, feel in your fingers. Mary Yap, co-founder of Lithos Carbon, wants to speed up this natural process with enhanced rock weathering. Forever, Sun Rock was just kind of piling up this dust that was the waste product from washing all their product and their rock. But then Mary and Lithos came along and realized this was like gold for taking carbon out of the atmosphere. It's like putting cubes or rocks of sugar in your coffee, which is probably not going to do much versus powdered sugar in your coffee. The powdered sugar in this case are very small rocks that were hidden in plain sight. And when sprinkled on farm fields, it can significantly accelerate the time it takes to remove large amounts of CO2. Fortunately, the quarry and others like it have a lot of it laying around. And don't worry, they're not blasting a big mountain and making a hole in the earth just to make all this happen. This giant mine is already making rock for asphalt and concrete. When you extract all that ultra fine material out, you've got to find somewhere for it to go. And for the last 10 plus years, we've piled it up. We just made some really big piles and made berms out of it. Those berms of what they thought were waste grew to what they now affectionately call Brown Mountain. I like this. We're summiting like waste mountain. Exactly. <laughs> Carbon capture mountain. Carbon now. capture mountain, we'll call it. <laughs> A 120 foot mountain of basalt dust that Lithos is buying by the literal truckload. Dozens of trucks lined up all day picking up this unassuming climate gold. Each truck takes the dust to a farm within 75 miles. That's to limit the greenhouse gas emissions from the drive. They load it into their spreaders and sprinkle it over the soil. And what we're doing is we're taking this material and spreading out at about like one millimeter depth mm -hmm. across millions of acres of farmland eventually. Mm -hmm. And that really accelerates the weathering. And believe it or not, Enhanced rock weathering has another magical property. The added benefit to it, raising the pH of the soil and increasing crop yields is that it's cleaning the air mm -hmm. at the same time. Rick Bennett, lifelong farmer and now proud spreader of rock dust, is a firm believer that some things are not too good to be true. It's volcanic rock. I mean, it's 100% organic, all natural. There's no heavy metals in it. It's totally beneficial. We could set the rate in here of the bulk density of the material so that our spread rate is accurate. So it's all really like scienced out in here. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, high tech rednecks, I guess you would say. <laughs> <laughs> As we spread the rock dust on the field, data from the cab of the tractor is transmitted directly to Lithos. Then, Lithos meticulously collects thousands of soil samples to prove that it's working. Uh, so we're going to be taking hundreds of samples here at a super high density uh, and giving that data back to the farmer, the grower, so that they know what's going on in their field. Uh, and then we're going to send the other half of the sample that we collect to a geochemical lab so they can do the analysis of the carbon capture. As of right now, Lithos Carbon provides rock dust for more than 600 farms in at least 10 states, and that will go on until 2030. As with most carbon capture programs, one of the biggest challenges is cost. Funded primarily by companies who want to offset their own carbon emissions, the whole process is free for farmers. 
for now. Is enhanced rock weathering scalable? Absolutely. All the pieces of the puzzle already exist. We just need to snap them together. It's a very simple sort of solution. Mm -hmm. We're just taking things humans already do, rocks, farms, science, and then bringing it all together. And hopefully something that more of the globe can run with as well. Mm -hmm.